lot of things that Americans do that confuse the rest of the world. Like opening the gift in front of the person who gives it to you. We do this in Canada too, so this is definitely not just American. Although it may seem polite to open up the gift in front of the person who gives it to you, in some cultures they consider it rude and it comes off as greedy because you're so fast to open up the present. Like you should wait and be patient. And honestly, I'm not mad at it because isn't it so awkward opening gifts in front of people? Like, I love opening gifts, but it's a little awkward. It's like, how do I react? What do I do? And then you know, that awkward moment when you don't actually like it and you have to pretend to like it because you don't want to hurt the person's feelings. You know what? I might just move somewhere where I don't have to <laughs> open my gifts in front of people. <laughs> Laughing out loud and you're like, what ass are you? In some cultures, they actually think it's rude to show your teeth while laughing. They're not fond of the way that we just let out a hearty open mouth Laugh. Look, I don't care where you're from. If I make a joke, you better be laughing like this. Some foreigners who visit America cannot believe the portion sizes. You know what? I told you guys I live like half the year in Europe and half the year in like Canada and spend a lot of time in America. And it's like very common for my European friends to be like, the portion sizes in America are so big. And I guess they kind of are, but to be fair, I find that Americans often take food home, you know? Like you're not usually eating the whole meal there. Like you're taking it home in a doggy bag. Where here, I haven't really seen many people take it home. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's definitely a lot less rare. So you're like more likely to get a smaller portion size and finish the whole thing instead of taking it home for leftovers. And honestly, like who's mad at a mountain of mashed potatoes? <laughs> not me. On the topic of restaurants and food, tipping, tipping, tipping. In America, you know, you're, expect it to tip. And that's because the waiters, they usually don't make much money unless you tip them. But in a lot of places here in Europe, you don't tip. Like people don't expect the tip. And it's, I think there's a lot of confusion when you go visit other cultures, but I think it's important to always be aware of another country's culture so that you don't offend another culture or, you know, just be rude. The reason tipping is so popular in America is because they cut back on costs by not paying the servers and the waiters as much and then they can pay more on the food and giving you more food and more quality. And also apparently you get better service. Again, this is like a personal thing. You know, some people feel like the service is better. Some people feel like it's worse. Let me know in the comments what you think. You think the service is better if you tip? I'm all for tipping, but then again, I'm a little biased because I used to be a waitress. I used to be a bartender. So I know what it's like to only rely on tips. Like I've even worked and I'm not gonna like expose any establishments, but I worked somewhere where they didn't pay me anything hourly. Like I only made money off tips. So imagine if somebody didn't tip you, you're pretty much working for free. Now, again, this isn't the customer's fault. It's, you know, just the way the system works, I guess. Another thing that confuses the world is that Americans write the dates beginning with the month because the rest of the world is like, but yo, wouldn't you start on the smallest amount, the day and then the month and then the year. But then Americans like to say, you know, February the 2nd instead of the 2nd of February. This becomes really confusing for me when I'm trying to look at expired food. Because sometimes when I'm looking at a package and it says 0102 2019, I'm like, did this expire in January or in February? Am I gonna eat this and am I gonna die? Because I don't know, I don't know what, what's happening on these packages and it's, it's confusing. And I feel like the worst part is sometimes in Canada, I feel like they use either or. At least maybe in the States, maybe they stick to one and maybe in Europe they stick to one, but I feel like in Canada, sometimes I've seen either one and I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna die, die from food poisoning. poisoning. <sighs> this one, I take very personally. It would be awesome if the whole world could just be in sync and we got all just do the same thing and then I would never die from food poisoning. That would be sick. And then I wouldn't have to be sick. Another thing that confuses the world about America is the fact that the pharmacies sell so many things. Cause there are a lot of places where you go to a pharmacy and all you can buy is medicine. But in America, you go to like a CVS and you can buy anything. You can buy anything from medicine to Twinkies. And people are like, but Twinkies aren't good for your body. Why can you buy it at the pharmacy? Do you see the confusion? I see the confusion. I've grown up in Canada where like, I feel like Canada's like a weird mix of like uh, US culture, but also like European culture. So like, I kind of like, I'm in the middle of all these things. <laughs> Expecting free refills everywhere you get a drink. Many foreigners think it's strange that you're offered a free refill with a drink. They think like you pay for what you get and that's it. I mean, I'm down for free refills. <laughs> Can we just like pick our favorite things from every culture and like create a super culture? I feel like that'd be a disaster. Another thing that really creeps out foreigners is the massive giant gaps in between bathroom stalls. They don't feel comfortable. 
they're like, yo, too much of my knees showing. And there's a reason for this, whether it's a fair reason, I don't know, but it's a reason. Basically, it's so that you can easily tell if someone's in the stall. I feel like you could tell either way. This one, I don't care. I don't find it uncomfortable either way. Like, I, I don't really care if people really see my knees, but some people do and I respect that. Why do the coins have such confusing names? Like why couldn't it be called the one cent, the five cent, the 10 cent, the 25 cent? No, 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 it had to be called the penny, the nickel, the dime, and the quarter. I feel like the quarter makes sense. I don't actually know the origin of these words, but let's just leave it at that. While we're on the topic of money, why are all the bills the same color? I like my Canadian bills because the five is a blue and the 20 is a green. So like, you know, or even better, like the 50 is red. So you know when you got that fifth, the red, you're like, yeah, I'm balling. <laughs> You can see from far away, you know exactly how much the bill is worth without having to read it. I guess it's not that complicated, but it's a little complicated when you're used to everything being a different color. Paying sales tax on pretty much everything you buy. Yo, we got this in Canada too. You know how nice it is to go to a store in a country where they don't have sales tax and on the shelf, something is $10 and you take it to the counter and it's still $10. Instead of on the shelf, it's $10 and you take it to the counter and suddenly it's $11 and you're like, yo, I didn't do the math for this. Now I'm short a dollar. <laughs> That sucks. Using red cups at parties. This has literally become associated with American parties. Like people know you're drinking from a red cup. You're in America at a party. Now, obviously there's still red cups here, but it's like, now that I think of it, like almost every house party I've been to in America has been red cups. Of course. Everything in this video is not like down to a T. It's not gonna be everybody. It's like very generalizing, but it's pretty funny. You know what? In Aziland, we will drink out of pink cups and everybody will know Aziland for the pink cups. Another thing that Americans are known for is working constantly with very little vacation time. According to research, America is officially the most overworked country in the developed world, which kind of stinks because they also have the least amount of holidays. In a lot of states, they have no laws that say that you need vacation time. So there's people who actually never get a vacation time ever, like not even one day in a whole year. Remember I said I wanna pick and choose things up with the culture, like how about like, this is one of those that we like get rid of. <laughs> Another thing that shocks foreigners is that electrical outlets in America don't have an off button. And honestly, I've never seen an electrical outfit, outfit, outlet with an on and off button. Like there's no on and off button. Where are these people who have on and off buttons? Does that save energy? That sounds brilliant. I wanna look this up. Okay, so this is a picture of an electrical outlet with an on and off button. Apparently this one is in India. That is so cool. I didn't know this existed and I'm here for it. But like, I feel like I would just forget to turn it off and on because I have such a habit of it not existing. Like, would I ever remember? Probably not. And how much energy do we really lose from these outlets? I don't feel like it's substantial. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. I mean, we are here to learn off of each other after all. Now, this is something I have noticed. In America, most of the lemonade you get is like literally lemons squeezed with sugar and it's flat, okay? But in Europe, when I order lemonade for the most part, it's like a fizzy soda that tastes like lemons, but I don't think it's actually squeezed lemons. So the lemonade is definitely different. I can attest to that. For the most part, obviously, they both exist in both places. drive throughs are very common in America, but not everywhere in the world. There's some places in the world, like you don't see many drive throughs honestly here in the Netherlands. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I have never seen a drive through But in Canada, I swear I see a drive through every five minutes. This one doesn't really affect me because I don't drive. But if you drive, how would you feel about not having a drive through Are you for it? Or are you not for it? The cultural practice of napping is not officially embraced in America. Many other countries allow their employees to take quick power naps in between office hours. But in America, a lot of places you, you would lose your job if they caught you sleeping, <laughs> you know? Or at least they would tell you you're slacking. And honestly, guys, this is one thing, you know, everything else on the list, I'm like, eh, whatever. But this is something I can get behind. We need to embrace napping. I'm not incredibly passionate about a lot of things, but I'll be a nap supporter any day. <laughs> Measuring in miles, feet, and inches. Now this is an obvious one, yet it's still a constant source of confusion for most of the world. There are only three countries in the world that don't follow the metric system and America is one of them. And you might be saying it would be so much easier if the whole world just did the same thing and it's just really expensive to fix. This has been happening for so many years now that it's literally gonna cost so much money to switch the whole system around. They gotta change everything. So I wouldn't say impossible because nothing's impossible, but it's a little difficult. And also I believe they tried switching it once, but then the public just didn't really follow along, so it didn't really work. Sitting in the back seat of a cab. I feel like this is how I've grown up. 
But a lot of places it's customary to sit in the front with your driver. Is it weird that I find that weird? <laughs> it all comes down to what we're used to, right? But like I kind of just want my own like private space to like, you know, just chill on my phone. And this is just me. I don't really like to have small talk with my cab drivers. I like to, you know, get work done on my phone, check my emails. You know, that's like my like quiet time, my time to do stuff. So I feel like if I sat in the front, it would like encourage conversation. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the small talk because I'm like, okay, like we're gonna have this conversation and then I'm never gonna see you again. And it's like, bye. Cheese in a can. A lot of foreigners I've met call this plastic cheese. I don't really think it's made of plastic, but that's what they call it. A lot of people don't understand processed cheese. They're like, how does it come from aerosol can? But don't worry guys, I get it. Is it good for you? Probably not. But is any cheese good for you? Probably not. <laughs> oh my God. Cheddar and bacon flavored? <laughs> Almost anything can be deep fried. What you see as America's weakness, I see as their biggest strength. <laughs> okay, like on a real note, it's horrible for you, but does it taste good? Most of the time it does, unfortunately. You're better off not trying it because then you, you can't have enough. Like I remember when I first heard of a deep fried Mars bar and I was like, that's disgusting. And then I tried one and I was like, my God, this is so good. Like there's no way that's good for you. <laughs> 24 hour restaurants, again, their biggest strength. Because if you're like me, you get hungry at all hours of the day and night. <laughs> you need 24 hour restaurants. <laughs> but yeah, it's not so common everywhere. But there's nothing worse than being hungry and literally everything is closed in the middle of the night. Maybe I should just be sleeping. Maybe I should just be sleeping and that would fix everything. This is a trend that's been picking up in many states and it's dine in theaters. And honestly, I am here for this trend. Like there's nothing better than watching the Avengers and eating a giant turkey leg. Like, yeah, no, I, I, I love I love the dine in theaters. Those are my favorite. Now this one makes me really sad. In America, for the most part, you have to pay lots of money to go to school, especially if you want to go to university, like, yo, you, you're gonna be in debt after. <laughs> but there's a lot of countries around the world that offer free education. All you need to get in is the grades. And honestly, I think that's how it should be. I don't think money should be stopping kids from achieving their dreams and becoming who they want to be. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people who would make great scientists and great doctors and would help this world, but a lot of them just can't afford to do it. And yeah, they do offer scholarships, but I feel like there's probably so much competition to get those scholarships and not many kids get them. I'm a firm believer of everybody having access to healthcare and education. And I like really, really support that because you know, those things are very important. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you all so much. Stay awesome, stay sweet, and don't forget to be nice to each other. Bye-bye.